What's going on guys, CWG here, welcome to episode 78 on the Vault Hunters SMB. Did you know 78 cubic inches would be 0.4 feet tall? Interesting, that's a pretty random fact. <laughs> also, can you believe we're on episode 78 already? That's insane! Now, we got a lot of stuff to go over today, like, what's this giant picture here? Fuzzy Cub Terraforming Services? We'll pay that a visit in a bit. Also, these vines, yo. These vines keep spreading, and every time I chop down these vines, they come back and they grow in such weird patterns. Alright, anyways, let's go into the sub, and I'm proud to say I have installed walls well in the forward compartment check it out there's walls everywhere now there's actually like doors and stuff wow yep i finally got around to doing it and it's pretty awesome like here's our sonar ops room that has all our thermal series machines pretty cool and yes these walls are seafoam green color because that's what it's like on the actual sub and the reason they use this color is because it's supposed to calm you down let me know in the comments if this color is calming you down <laughs> Also, yes, our battery charge level's up to two now. Let's go. Only took like almost a week. Okay, before I show you guys everything I've done in the base in between episodes, you guys remember how last episode we did the prank on KD with the modular router and the oak logs? You guys told me in the comments and in the Discord that there is a camouflage upgrade. Now, I completely forgot about these guys, but it's a genius move. All you gotta do is like shift right click a block, pop it into the router and look it's camouflage you can't even tell it's there anymore how cool now there was only one issue kd was live streaming when you guys commented this i'm like crap how am i gonna add the camouflage upgrade without him noticing well i'm gonna play some footage of kd's live stream and as you can tell there in the bottom left corner i log in i sneak over to his base while he's building put in the camouflage upgrade and sneak out of there undetected it was a success so now i'm gonna play you the reaction of KD finding the prank. It's hilarious. I recommend the stump in the middle. It was very helpful. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one stump in the middle is not going to be super helpful, I don't think. You asked for dark oak. You didn't specify. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this... Hold up, buttercup. Hold up, buttercup. Oh, you sneaky boy. What's this? Ha-ha! What's this? Ha-ha! I see it! The dark oak! <laughs> okay, I really didn't understand the... <laughs> I didn't understand the prank here. I get it now. I understand. I understand why everybody was asking about the wood. <laughs> I was just gonna leave it there. Well, did you guys like the reaction? <laughs> I think it went perfectly. What an awesome prank. Oh man, with modular routers, you could do so many pranks. I've thought of a bunch of more ideas since that episode. All right, now I can go over the things I've changed around the base. Obviously, there's walls everywhere. Cool. I even moved the mailbox here. Say we got mail. There's an alarm now. AC yeah. Dubs, you got mail. Yep, yep. I know I got mail. Thank you. It's very loud. There's like a light. Pretty cool. Oh, also, Lova left a comment that this looks like a face. Yeah, you see the eyes and the mouth? Thanks, Lova. Now I can't unsee that. Every time I look at the stuff, now, I see the face. Great. I wonder, though, can we give it eyebrows? <laughs> there we go. Using sticks and item frames, it's now an angry face. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let me show you guys what I did. Uh, so here's the captain quarters. Look at this. It's a doormat from supplementaries. It's just crafted with a couple flax. Pretty easy. It says Captain CWG quarters. Should it be Captain CW's quarters? That might sound better. Look, we got our old helmet inside the item frame. How cool. I, I have like an item frame above everything. Like this is the control room. It's got a controller on it. <laughs> Get it? I'm funny. Now, this was the executive officer's quarters, uh, aka Sturcat. Sturcat said she really wanted to be the executive officer, so I'm like, sure, why not, Sturcat? You, you could live across the hall from me. <laughs> also, we got the little cat trinket in there. That's adorable. We go over here. These are the sonar ops rooms use, using a speaker to represent sound. Yeah, I know. Pretty clever. Here, this is chief's quarters. This is where like the salty chiefs that have been on the sub for 10 plus years go. Now, I wanted to put an anchor above this. There's actually like an anchor 
trinket yeah you can see right here but i don't know anyone who's gotten this trinket yet but as soon as someone does i want one and it's going right here i will save a spot for that trinket whenever we get it you see over here is like where birthing's gonna be there's ford cruise birthing uh what is this it's just a random runic altar from Britannia with a bunch of golden carrots in huh that must be Rob, because I watched his video and he was fumbling around with Batania. My guess is he put in a bunch of golden carrots and could not figure out how to take them out. Well, this is how you take them out. Shift right click with an empty hand, Rob. Learn how to Batania! Alright, get that out of here. Hey, it's something we don't have to craft later in the season. <laughs> All right, here's the botany pot, the Kajirium room. I got rid of all the walnut woods. Cause, I don't know, it just didn't fit in. And honestly, this feels like way better. Also, I should probably switch from spruce drawers to like a different color drawer, but that would like take forever. So I'll wait for a rainy day to do that. <laughs> And yeah, it's just really nice that all the rooms are in this place. It makes the submarine feel absolutely massive. Like, there's so much room for activities. And this is all just the forward half of the ship. Look, there's a pancake. Piles of cookies. Did you know you can make a cookie pile by combining three cookies? The more you know. Now, if we go down here to machinery room, you can see that I added the walls down here too. This is where the torpedoes are going to lay. I don't know how I'm going to build a torpedo yet, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. And the colossal chest is in here in the logistics room. Pretty cool. Now, that's about all the work I've done in the forward compartment. What's more important is what I've been doing in the engine room. Let's go check it out. As you can see, I replaced the entire reactor compartment wall on the engine room side, and I've started putting in the floors. Welcome to engine room middle level. This is where there's going to be like a bunch of like electronic stuff. I don't know. I'm not going to go into too much detail of what's going to go onto each floor. Just know they are there. In this room, engine room forward, this is where like a lot of the re radioactive pipes that come from the primary coolant system are. Fun fact. Now, if we go back up to middle level, right up the staircase here, this is where our turbine generators are going to to be this is what's going to generate all the power for our base they're going to be vertically mounted here and here now on an actual sub these turbines are actually horizontally mounted but with the mechanism turbines you can only mount them vertically which is a bit sad but that's okay and over here this is where the main engine's going to be this is where there's going to be like all the giant gears and stuff and it's going to spin the shaft you know the shaft here in shaft alley yep this is called shaft alley that's what's actually called on the sub and if we pop into free camp here you can see the propeller is on the other side here so the main engine is going to drive this shaft to the propeller pretty cool so yeah at least i kind of have the engine room marked out the way i want it this is where our maneuvering is going to be this is where i actually worked i worked on the panel right here which like controlled the reactor operations there's also like a electrical panel here and a engine panel over here pretty neat well that basically sums up the building that i've been doing in between episodes let's figure out what's going on with this terraforming services i believe this is fuzzy shop at spawn and oh boy do i need some terraforming here let me just uh pop into free cab but yeah as you can see the outside of the dry dock it's kind of just like a ledge to the dirt around it you know i'm sure if fuzzy did some of his terraforming magic he could make this look way cooler i mean people already did a great job of clearing out the mountain and putting in this tower but i think if we get fuzzy in on this too we can make it look even cooler so let's go pay his shop a visit Oh, Fuzzy, I'd like some terraforming. All right, well, it's time to book my free consultation. Yeah, I'm just going to send him a message on Discord and see what's up. <laughs> All right, while I'm waiting on Fuzzy to respond, uh, there's a new thing in the shopping district. Let's just say it's another Rob project. Oh, I got to check this out. So there's like a big painting board. Uh, it says, uh whole bunch of colors we can select from let me read the rules so apparently every 30 seconds you can click one of these buttons and it will give you a concrete and then you grab the scaffolding from in here and you can place it wherever you want interesting i'm just gonna put my own yellow dot right here to create my mark on this masterpiece this kind of reminds me of a r slash place which is a thing on reddit where everyone can like change a pixel color every five minutes it's kind of like that but on the server which is neat oh i just heard the things tick that means i can get another concrete block eh yeah <laughs> so you know if we camp out here long enough we could like make something like maybe i can make a crown that would be kind of cool i don't know give me ideas in the comments of things we could try to put up here well, while we wait for Mustachio Fuzzy to come back online, let's go back over to the Sus Marine. I think it's time to go nuclear. 
That's right. I finally want to start working on the nuclear reactor. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. You can't really get a view of the reactor from here. But look at it. Who's ready to build it? Should I put a window in here? Do you think that would look kind of cool? What if I put in like a tinted glass window? Would that look kind of cool? Eh, kinda. Anyways, the reason we want a reactor is two things. One, it generates a butt ton of power, so that's good. And thing number two is that we're trying to make the submarine as realistic as possible. I mean, look, we even put the reactor compartment in the center of the sub, just like an actual submarine, and there's gonna be actual turbines. It's, it's so realistic, oh my goodness. So in order to build those reactors, we need to unlock mechanism generators, which is 14 knowledge stars, AKA 112 knowledge shards. So how much do we have in the system? Wait, we have 111? I thought we had 112. Oh, I think I used a knowledge star. Yeah, I wanted to craft another angel block and those require knowledge stars. Uh-oh. Wait, guys, never fear. We have a crate we haven't opened yet and there's a chance there might be some knowledge in it. A little bit of a desperation try, but pop it? Ah, we didn't get any knowledge, but we did get a bit of lemon. Nice. Oh my gosh. I literally need eight knowledge essence. I just need eight essence. Uh, let's meet up with uh, KD real quick. Maybe we could make some sort of deal for just, I literally just need eight knowledge essence. What if we traded him like half a stack of wither skulls? I think he'd take that deal. All right, let's fly over to KD's base. Has the, oh my gosh, he's been, oh my gosh goodness he's been so busy I, we were just here like the other day what the heck well i hope i'm not spoiling anything too much hey katie katie can you hear me oh there he is why is he chilled with the flowers <laughs> hello there hi i'm trying hi. not to give off too many spoilers but there's something i need to ask you okay what's up do you have eight knowledge dust eight knowledge just dust, just like eight, the knowledge essence? eight dust not even shards just just the dust uh no i got 35 i'll trade you eight uh, dust for half a stack of wither skulls yo i will take that i'm Hold desperate on. i need wither skulls thank you <laughs> <laughs> there you go that should be eight ah uh, my hero thank you well is there anything you want to show off or are you you gonna wait uh you could show off the front of the base if you want to i'm still working on it though okay i got a glance at it i see you're placing in the flowers oh man it's the biggest starter house I've ever seen. <gasps> what color is this? Oh, this is gray. The gray the gray shingles are pretty cool looking. The, yeah. the gray with the light blue looks really, really good together. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's cool. Thank you for the knowledge. I'll be checking up on this. Every every day I come here, there's like a million new things. I've been building nonstop for three days straight, so it's been <sighs> quite the activity. All of this for 30 seconds of a video. Yay me! Hey, that's the YouTube <laughs> lifestyle. Well, the <laughs> Minecraft YouTube lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. All right. Later, Katie. All right. Later, c -Dub. All right, guys. Mission accomplished. We got the eight knowledge essence that we need. I can't believe we were, like, so short. Imagine if I accidentally, like, clicked this out of my inventory and I lost the essence, like, somewhere in this lake. That would be bad. Well, let's get back into the sub. Using my amazing flying skills, I'm going to land straight into the fan room. Okay, that didn't really work. All right, so now if we look at the system, we should have 112 knowledge shards. Let's go. So let us make 14 knowledge cores. And oh my gosh, we're getting low on vault diamonds. Oh no, we're getting really low on vault diamonds. Wait, and we're out of Beniatite? Really? We haven't run out of Beniatite in ages. <laughs> well, I guess let's do some fortuning. Just gotta place a few Betty boys. How many Bettys do you think we're gonna get out of this? Pow. And the amount of Betty boys we got is 1,487. Not bad. And that wasn't even all of our Beniatite ore. But I'm actually really worried if we have enough vault diamonds. Yeah, because we need to make six more cores. <sighs> Oh, okay. We have enough with only 13 left to spare. I wonder, is Vault Diamonds going to become our limiting component instead of Knowledge Essence now? That would definitely be a shift in the balance. Anyways, we have enough for 14 Knowledge Stars, just barely by the skin of our teeth. Let us consume and unlock Mechanism Generators. It comes complete with nuclear reactors. Yay, it makes it sound so fun. <laughs> And with that, I would say we're a little bit more than halfway done with this uh, mod tech tree, but we still got a lot more mods to go. And every time you pick up a mod, the other mods get more expensive, except for the quality of life ones. Like we should unlock uh, trash cans and elevators. They only cost one each. I mean, that's pretty cheap. Doesn't get cheaper than one knowledge star, am I right? All right. Well, it is now reactor time. I'm going to be building a pretty big boy reactor. Like I think this is like what? Nine by nine? 
Yeah, this is gonna be a 9 by 9 by 9 reactor. The biggest reactor I've ever built, but you know, this is a nuclear submarine and we're gonna need a lot of power for it. So, you wanna make yourself a reactor? You're gonna need the following things. Reactor glass, fission reactor casings, fission reactor ports, fission reactor logic adapters, control rods, and fuel assemblies. Now the real question is, how expensive are these? The reactor glass just cost glass, lead, and enriched iron. Okay, that's not too bad. The fission reactor casings, oh, they require steel casings. This is going to be expensive. That's going to cost a ton of chromatic steel, laramar, osmium, and more steel. Hmm. The ports are just used with elite control circuits. That's doable. Control rod assemblies, same deal. That's not too bad. And the fission fuel assemblies, not too bad either. It's definitely these casings that are going to be the toughest. So I'm just going to craft everything that we're going to need for this reactor. And hopefully we have enough materials. And I'll be right back. All right, I got the frame to the reactor built. And man, this is costing so much lead. I know, lead out of all things. Luckily, I got our pentupling set up running right here, turning raw lead into more delicious lead ingots. And now it's time to place in the fuel assemblies. This is actually what holds the fission fuel. You know, that delicious fissile fuel. Now we can use our building gadget to help us place these fuel assemblies. And wow, we're going to need a lot more. I believe last season we built a 5x5 five five reactor and now we're building a 9x9. Nine nine. This is a completely different scale. And yes, these fuel assemblies are costing me so much lead. Well, I'm gonna keep crafting these fuel assemblies and I'll be right back. Well, guys, we ran into a little bit of a roadblock. I guess I should have seen this coming, but on top of each of these fuel assemblies, we need a control rod assembly, and those require elite control circuits. So we need 25 of these, which means we need 50 reinforced alloys, which means we need, oh, 50 vault diamonds. And we already used like almost all of our vault diamonds. We only have 18 left. No. So this is where we're going to have to end our reactor journeys for now until we get more vault diamonds, which means we need to run some vaults to get some vault diamonds. eh? Now we do have a lot of gilded catali. So I'm thinking, what if we make a bunch of library rooms? and then just slap in all our gilded catalyze. So let's go ahead and make two library rooms. That one has an instability of six, and our other one has an instability of nine and a half. Okay, not the best. That makes me a little bit nervous. Let us auto-complete a crystal, lapis, sugar cane, glass, and salmon. That, that should be able to complete itself. Nice, gotta love the auto-completion altar. <laughs> Next, we need a seal of the architect, which is gonna cost another vault diamond block. Oh no. And a knowledge shard? No! Crap. I need another knowledge shard. This episode is turning into a disaster. Who's online? Evit? Maybe we could trade with her. Let's grab another half a stack of wither skulls, I guess. <laughs> Evit, do you got any knowledge shards? Oh, there's two of- okay. You're the real Evit. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Do you have a spare knowledge shard? Just, just, just one shard. I'll, tra I'll trade you, I'll trade you half oh, yeah. a stack of wither skulls. Oh, yeah, that's a great, <laughs> I'll take that. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm desperate. I need this thing bad. Thank you. Let's go. Awesome. And I need afterlife crystals. <laughs> Yay. All the afterlifes you can handle. Oh, uh, perfect. Well, thank you. All right, close your eyes and count to three. Okay. One. <laughs> we disappeared. All right, once again, we have been saved by the server members. We got our knowledge shard. We got our seal of the architect. So we'll start by adding inscriptions to a crystal until we're at instability 85%. Okay. Now I got a comment that you can search inscription hashtag zero point and it'll show you all your inscriptions that have less than 1% instability, which is pretty useful. So let's just grab a bunch of these guys. All right, this brings us up to 86%. Next is adding the libraries and then hope it doesn't exhaust. Okay, we're good and we're good. Okay, cool. Next up, we add all our gilded catali. And once again, we got to hope that it doesn't exhaust. Ah, it exhausted. But we did manage to get five gilded on it. That's 125% more gilded chests. I'd say that's a win. And we didn't even get any curses. Okay. We're going to be running with our Thanos pouch faux show because we need all the item quantity we can get. And hopefully we can get a lot of vault diamonds from this vault and then we can get back to work on the reactor. So let's go ahead and hop in the vault. We need our vault diamonds. Let's go. All right, we got one trapped, five gilded, and one shortened. The trap doesn't matter. The shortens a bit sad, but we got 16 minutes to mine all the gilded chest we can handle. 
Oh yeah. Gilded chests, gilded chests. Give me vault diamonds like the rest. That way I can build a reactor. Give me them gildeds. Look at that, two vault diamonds straight to the pouch already. Omega. Ooh, and we got a key piece from that. I kind of forgot that we're gonna get key pieces as well. Although I will say the fact that we're out of knowledge and vault diamonds at the same time means that the, the devs did a really good job at balancing the loot you get from the vaults. So I will say hats off to y'all. Omega. Look at all these gildeds. Mm. All right, I've looted all of one of the library rooms. It's on to the second one. I'm not gonna tell you how many vault diamonds we got until the very end. Go ahead and leave a guess in the comments below and don't cheat, wink, wink. Omega. And with seven minutes to spare, our vault's complete, getting 7,000 XP. Now, how many vault diamonds did we get? Da 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 da. We got 84 vault diamonds. Let's go. That's more than enough that we need to finish the reactor. Oh, now I'm excited. And we almost have enough key pieces to make another key. Nice. And we got all these jewels. Are any of them good? I'll let you know. And here's the good jewels we got. This one's kind of spicy. 20% vanilla immortality jewel with some item rarity. That's kind of cool. <gasps> Look, we got a copious jewel with 15 size. Small enough to put on the double stuff Oreo, but I'm going to keep waiting. I think we can get a better one than 1.1%. Now we should be able to make 50 of these reinforced alloys. Nice. Then we can make 25 elite control circuits. Nice. Then do we have everything we need to just make 25? of these guys we do let's go back to the reactor i'm gonna top off all of these fuel rods with control rod assemblies and fun fact if you don't know much about how a reactor works these control rod assemblies have these rods you can see poking out of them they will actually insert themselves into the fuel matrix to lower reactor power because they absorb neutrons pretty cool now all we should have to do is put some reactor glass on the top and i think it should formate itself all right here's the last piece of reactor glass it formated! You saw those red particle effects? That means it worked. Let's open it up. Oh, baby! We gotta switch the temperature to freedom units. There we go. Fahrenheit. <laughs> Now, we have a massive reactor, the biggest reactor I've ever built using the mechanism mod. Now we have to get two things in it. One, a source of fuel, and two, we need a coolant. Now you can use water as a coolant, but that's kind of boring if you ask me. The fun way to do it is with sodium. Plus sodium can transfer way more heat than water can. So we need to fill up this bad boy with sodium. So I'm gonna need four reactor ports in this bad boy. One for sodium intake, one for sodium outtake, one for fuel input, and one for radioactive waste. You can cycle between these using your configurator. Now we're already making sodium through brine. What is brine? It's just salt water. We're splitting salt water into sodium and chlorine, you know, table salt. The chemistry's not that advanced. Now we have been just dumping all the sodium because we haven't had a use for it, but now we have a use for it. So I'm gonna pipe this all the way to the reactor. And let's place the final pipe, boom. The reactor is now slowly, and I mean slowly, filling up with sodium. This is going to take a long time, but it's just going to be running in the background, slowly filling up with sodium. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we need to work on fuel production. We need fuel, uranium fuel. So instead of walking you guys step by step on how to make this uh, uranium fuel, I'm just going to make a setup for it probably over here. And then I'll jump back in when I'm done and I'll show you guys how it works. And we're back and I made the machines and this should work, I think. I think. So we got sulfuric acid coming into this guy in which I just connected a pipe up to our sulfuric acid boy right here. So this guy's eating through the gunpowder. You'll love to see it. Now in this chest, we need to put in fluorite. And as you can see in my inventory, I have a metric butt ton of fluorite. You remember fluorite ore, the stuff that kind of looks like chromatic iron ore? The stuff that used to trick us whenever we thought we found some chromatic iron? Yeah. That's the stuff we need right now. In fact, I'm gonna fortune so much of it that let's place it outside the dry dock, a massive fluorite cube of doom. Time to harvest. Now with a little bit of fortune five magic, we have over a thousand. Oh my gosh, we're being followed by even more. Come up with me, young fluorite. We're gonna toss you all the system. How much did we get? Holy bananas. We got 7,600 fluorite. 
you'll love to see it. Now, what's awesome about fluorite is that you can compress them into blocks like so. Let's uh, compress all of our fluorite and let's look at this block. It actually looks cool. It kind of looks like packed snow, doesn't it? I'm sure it doesn't taste like snow. I don't really know what fluoride tastes like. Does it taste like toothpaste? I don't know. Well, let's load up this chest with fluoride and it will turn the sulfuric acid into hydrofluoric acid. Nice. So now the hydrofluoric acid goes into this guy and it's ready to be combined with something. What is that something? We need uranium. Uranium goes into this chest. But when I look at my system, uh, we have zero uranium. All the uranium that we do have is from the power mod. And sadly, you cannot take the power mod uranium and put it in here. It's, it's got to be the mechanism uranium. Apparently, they have different chemical properties or something. I don't know. More like mod developers not wanting to work together. Now, I'm surprised that I don't have any uranium considering we mined out this entire dry dock. Like, we had to have gotten some uranium. What I think happened is, I bet you that Code is taking out uranium, because Code also has a reactor and is always needing that stuff. Also, the vines keep growing. Should we try to kill the vines or just let them keep growing? Let me know in the comments. Well, guys, I think there's only one solution to get some uranium. We're going to have to use our Terra Shatterer 3.0 and actually go mining. I know, CWG mining? That That's weird. I haven't had to go mining in months. <laughs> See, guys, I even checked the gaming district. You guys remember how we dug that, like, absolutely massive hole? In fact, let me give you guys a little bit of spoilers update pro progress. You promised not to tell the other guys? Good? Okay. So if we fly down the beacon hole here, remember this massive hole me, Rob, and Code have been digging out? Well, now it's divided into layers for this big mini game that we're building. You got the miscellaneous layer. You got the CWG layer where I haven't even done anything. Yep, I suck. We'll get to it. This is the layer Fuzzy's been working on. Looking cool. This is the layer that Code has been doing. Lots of cool stuffs and things over there. This is Peep's layer. Hey, Peep also did nothing like me. And then Rob's layer. Dude, Rob made like a maze with like changing light and changing floors like look at that look at that what the heck is going on here this mini game is going to be absolutely insane when it's done and over here is all the ores that we got digging this place out and i just couldn't help but notice there's absolutely no uranium in here i think code has been has pretty much taken all the uranium on the server for his reactor but we need uranium for our reactor what the heck like <gasps> you see that right there that's uranium that's exactly what we're looking for. So what if I just mined in like this direction? We'll just mine this direction and consume all the uranium we find. I might need to make some night vision potions. Look, there's more uranium up there. We're finding the uranium. You'll love to see it. Dang, there's a lot of uranium. Well, I'm going to do some mining off camera and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually having a lot of fun mining again. I forgot how relaxing this is. Uh, I got some night vision potions. So that way I don't have to worry about torches. And I just mine a few blocks, go like, oh, look, some uranium. Oh, look, some zinc in case we need more brass for create. Oh, look, even more uranium. Uranium is really common at this level. If you guys want to mine for uranium, I recommend Y level minus 51 going ham with your hammer mining a few blocks forward and then turning around and seeing if there's any ores wow of course now that i'm recording there's only one uranium right there but yeah super fun just use night vision potions and go ham with the hammer we're getting like zinc osmium and all kinds of good stuff whoa guys look at this i ran into one of those like rare iron ore veins that you get in 118 i have never actually ran into one of the iron ore veins before I find that really cool. Look, there's like uh, raw blocks of iron you can get. They're so tough, not even the Pickering can mine them. That's like nine chunks of iron right there. That, that's a win. All right, guys, with one minute and 30 seconds remaining on our night vision potion, I think our mining session is over. Now, how many ores did we get from this 24 minute session? Um, a lot. Let's check our backpack. 615 uranium ore. That's what I'm talking about. Also 600 zinc in case we need more brass. 400 fluorite ore. 200 diamond ore. Some lapis, some gold. We even ran into a chromatic iron vein that gave us 160. Hilarious. So yeah, mining with the Terra Shadow 3.0 amazing and let's look on the mini map to see how far we mined yeah this is the gaming district mushroom island we mined all the way down here in a straight line in just 24 minutes that's pretty good and look how far away the gaming district is from spawn all the way over here that's like quite the distance all right let's go home and fortune some uranium dang it's crazy that we went from having zero uranium to this much uranium in just 30 minutes less than 30 minutes actually let's get to fortune and see how much we get oh tasty uranium 
Oh, how you will keep me warm at night. Yes, you will. You know, I've always wondered what uranium tastes like. Like, do you think it's sweet? You think it's like a salty or a metallic flavor? I don't know. And the amount of raw uranium we got is 1,952 in less than 30 minutes of mining. Let's go. And yes, you can run uranium through the ore pentupling setup. So we're going to get like even more than this insanity. Like, you remember all that lead we processed earlier? Yeah, we got this much lead, which is how much? 2,135? Yeah. And the cool part about it all going inside the pouch is I could just drop the pouch off here and it will get automatically sucked. Nice. So let's grab some uranium here and finally test out our fissile fuel machine. Let's see if it's working. So you dump the uranium in here, goes into the enrichment chamber. Let's slap some speed upgrades into this bad boy and it makes yellow cake. Cool. The yellow cake goes into the chemical oxidizer. If I remember correctly, this machine is the limiting component. So let's slap all the speed upgrades into this guy. Cool. Now the uranium oxide's coming into here. It is turning into uranium hexafluoride by combining with the hydrofluoric acid. It goes into the centrifuge and it is turning into fissile fuel and going into this pipe. Nice, it's working. So the next thing I gotta do is connect this pipe to the reactor and I'll be right back. And with this pipe, our reactor will start getting fissile fuel. Nice. Now we have to be very careful to not accidentally hit the activate button or this thing could explode. Oh yeah, did, I guess I never mentioned uh, mechanism reactors, if they overheat or they get too much uh, radioactive waste in them, uh, they will explode and irradiate the entire area. It happened once on accident last season and yeah, it's not a fun time. So unless we want to start wearing our hazmat suits, I'm going to have to be careful with this guy. Now it is going to take a long time for this to fill up with both sodium and fuel just because of the size of this thing. So I'm going to have to do some AFK and but I mean, all the infrastructure's in place now. We have our fissile fuel. We got our sodium going in. There's increasing amounts of pipe spaghetti underneath the floor, but hey, it's under the floor. If you look at it from up here, it's not that bad. In fact, if we put in some more myonite here, it looks actually pretty clean. So I just gotta make sure I keep this chest full of uranium and this chest full of fluorite blocks, and we should be good. All right, after a while of AFKing, um, our sodium's not even 10% full yet. But hey, our fissile fuel is completely full, and it completely filled up the pipe leading up to it. And it's all the way backed up to the uranium chest, so that's good. We got plenty of fuel, all from a 20-minute mining session. That's, that's pretty impressive. So we're just gonna have to wait on the sodium to be produced. Uh, I'll just have to AFK overnight or something, and we should be fine. Then after that, we're gonna have to set up the steam generators to make steam, and set up the turbine so we can start making power. And this thing should be able to produce a redonkulous amount of power. I haven't even done the calculations yet. And with that, it's Meme of the Daytime. Today's meme comes from Knight from the Discord. Relics, what is my purpose? You turn into bitter lemons. Oh, God. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. CWG, ow.